In this Autodesk Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly model a soccer ball using a polygon primitive. To do this, we want to start with a blank scene, then click Create, Polygon Primitives, Soccer Ball. When the soccer ball comes in, it will be a small 2 cm diameter soccer ball. Let's go ahead and change this by clicking in the Attribute Editor. We can click on P Solid 1, let's rename it Ball. Then we can change the scale to 10.8 by 10.8, by 10.8, and we can then zoom out and notice that it's halfway through the grid. We can translate the soccer ball up 10.8 in the Y direction, and it'll sit directly on the grid. Next, we need to switch to face mode. If I double click on this, notice that it selects all the faces. We can't have that because we need to round out these faces. So let's hold right mouse button and select vertex. Then marquee select all the vertices. Then hold shift and right mouse button and we can detach components. Now if I go back to face mode and I double click on one of these faces, only one is selected. Next, let's go to the modeling toolkit. We will select this shape in object mode and then we will click smooth twice. So now we have extra geometry. Next, I'll switch to wireframe mode so I can see inside. I need to make the soccer ball round. So what I want to do is go to object mode, make sure I have the soccer ball selected, then go to the deform menu. I can select sculpt. This puts a sculpt deformer inside it. If I press R for scale and I change this, eventually it starts to round out the soccer ball. But how do we know how far to go? Well, we know the size of our soccer ball, so we can go to the attribute editor, and then on sculptor 1, I can just type in 10.8 for scale, and this will make it perfectly round. It will also make the soccer ball regulation size. Then we can go back to our shaded view and we need to delete our history because if I move this, everything gets destroyed. So I'll undo that and then I'll make sure I select the soccer ball and then up here I can delete history with this icon. So now everything is back to its original form and I can also freeze the transformations. Next, we need to make divisions between the different parts of the soccer ball. We can do that in object mode. Let's go back to wireframe mode so we can see inside the soccer ball. Then we are going to press Command E or Control E to extrude. We're going to extrude down in Z. And so we can just go ahead and grab this. And we want to go down negative one. So we can type that value in. And then we also want to offset negative 0.5. This will keep gaps from forming. Then we can delete all those inside faces by pressing delete. Let's go back to shaded view. Notice that all our normals are flipped the wrong way. We can fix that very easily by pressing Q to get our selection tool, marquee select, then go to mesh display, reverse. Now, if I press three to smooth, you'll notice that I can see all the divisions in between the different parts of the soccer ball. Let's go back to object mode and let's assign this a default material. So we can right click on it and assign a new material. We'll give it an Arnold standard surface. We'll leave the color at white. Then we can go to face mode. Then we can double click and hold shift to get all these small parts of the soccer ball. We can orbit around, continue to hold shift, double click on these faces. Once you have all the faces selected, then you can right click assign new material. Once again, we'll pick an AI standard surface. This time though, we'll make the base color black. We can go ahead and make a renderer of this. To do that, we can go ahead and just add a simple physical sky light. And then if we go to Arnold, Arnold render view, and we click render, we'll see our soccer ball. It's a bit glossy, so we could add a quick bump map to this. Let's go to our hypershade. And here is our first AI standard surface one. We'll go ahead and rename this white. And then our second AI standard surface, we'll go ahead and label this black. We'll right click on the first one and we'll select graph network. Now we can see it down here in the hypershade. What we need to do is click inside this graph network, press tab, and we can say AI bump and then we'll select an AI Bump 2D, and we can place this right here. Next, we'll go ahead and press Tab again, and we'll say AI Noise, and then we'll select AI Noise, 
and we'll place it to the left there. We'll zoom out a bit and we'll press tab and we'll say AI user and we'll get AI user data float. This is a great way that we can have all the scale of our noise come out of the same value. We'll drag out value to X, out value to Y, and out value to Z. Then for the out color, we need to click the plus button because we can only have one color go into the bump map. And then for the out value, we can drag this over to the normal camera. So now we'll get bump, but we won't see any bump because we need to click this and let's change the value to something like 30. And you can see here, I missed one of the values. So now they're all scale it the same way. And you can see we start to get a little bit of texture. So now if I go back to my render view, I can see how that looks. You can see now I have a little bit of rippling across the surface. It's still a bit shiny, so you could play with the specular, but we have two materials, so we can fix that very easily in the hypershade. So once I select black, I can click add selected nodes to black, and then I have it here. So what I can do is go ahead and drag that same out value into the normal camera of the black color. So then the black will have the same bump map. Let's go back to our Arnold render view. Here's our Arnold render view, and you can see that we have some nice bump going across the entire soccer ball. You can then change the specular highlights and different things to make your soccer ball even more realistic. Hopefully this helps you quickly model a soccer ball in Autodesk Maya and use it in your 3D modeling projects.